Hello everybody, my name is Trey Peavy. I'm the product manager of RP Products here at Colmet. Uh, what we wanted to do in our video today was to talk through uh, sort of the Colmet approved way to measure the airflow in your spray boot. There's a lot of different methods to do this. Um, what we're, we'll kind of talk about today is the way that we prefer that people um, try to test for the airflow. And we'll kind of talk about some of those reasons as we go through. But first off, let's start on some of the tools that you can use to measure airflow. Um, they, they come in all shapes and sizes, even some that I have on the table, probably uh, different models, different manufacturers are gonna look a little different. But we'll kind of just kind of go through them here. Uh, this device right here is, is called an a anemometer. And it, it takes a turning vane here as the air moves through it it spins and the uh, device calculates that now some of these uh, can be a little more fancy some of them can be a little more simple as far as you can set up area and it'll figure average and things like that um, but mostly all you're looking for when you're trying to in the way that, that we're going to talk about is we're looking for uh, feet per minute we want to measure how much air velocity we're moving um, through our filter face, and we'll talk more about that. But this is an anemometer. A little more uh, technical way, if you had something like a, a digital manometer, or you know, like your manometer that came on your boot, these are the same device, they measure pressure differential. So there's a little more math involved when you're talking about using pressure differential to, to come into a, an air velocity such as feet per minute. But what you can use these far is with like a pitot tube. This pitot tube is, uh, has a duct mounting kit on it. So this would be something that you may see that would be more permanently installed in the duct work that could give out a pressure reading. Once you know that pressure reading, you can do some maths based on the size of the duct and you can determine how much air is actually moving through that duct, how much volume, cubic feet per minute. So uh, they are portable versions of this. This tube can work portably as well. Uh, this one just has a duct mounting kit on it just for our demonstration purposes. Uh, it reads static pressure as well as, well as velocity pressure. So uh, another device that's probably a little out of a lot of people's price range, but it's a very accurate device um, as far as measuring airflow. Now, when we're talking about measuring airflow in a booth or in a duct work, there's always a lot of variables because of system effect and, and the laminar uh, air movement and things like that. But uh, this is in short, just called a hot wire. The air passes through this little probe here on the end. Uh, a lot of these, most of these come with a telescoping, um, you know, uh, handle. And uh, these devices can calculate area. Uh, you can type in how big of an area you're reading. It'll figure all the math for you. Um, you would just have to, you know, go back to the manufacturer's uh, manual to figure out exactly how to work all that. This device right here is a, uh, you know, an averaging uh, air velocity uh, probe. It takes like 16 measurements at one time, which is quite handy. Uh, the downfall of this instrument here, the one that we have here, is its range is really from like a thousand feet per minute to 5,000 feet per minute. So you would have to hook it to a manometer type device to read that pressure differential. And being that we're looking somewhere between 100 and 300 feet per minute, uh, you would need a device that could really go down low as far as pressure in decimal places. And then a good bit of math is, has to be done to calculate that uh, because you're really using a device sort of out of its scope range. Um, probably the simplest device to use and the one that we kind of fall back here at Coolment, uh, this one's a little dated, but what it is is just uh, a volometer, which is really kind of what all these things can be, but it's just an analog, uh, you change the port, the tubes out here in the top, and depending on the, the range that you're looking for. Uh, the one that we have in here right now would give us a range from uh, looking at it from uh, zero to 300. So that's kind of in the range where we would want to be. So we kind of talked about those devices. Let's talk about how to measure that airflow. So when we talk about spray boots, either if they're cross drafts, side down drafts, uh, anything like that, we're looking uh, to get the airflow measurement at the filter face. Our exhaust fans are running and they're pulling all the air that way. 
okay? That can work in a pressurized boot or non-pressurized boot. So our exhaust fan is really gonna tell us how many linear feet a minute we're moving in the booth, okay? So if you stood in the center of a booth, and let's say that booth is 20 foot wide, and it was a cross draft configuration, and you held your bolometer, you know, where you could get a, an airflow reading across there, you may not get a whole lot of velocity there, but you could move down the wall and you would get a lot more velocity, probably well over 100 feet per minute. If the, in the booth would probably be set up at 100 feet per minute. If we went to the other wall, we'd probably get well over 100 feet per minute. But what happens is, is air kind of profiles around things. And in a cross draft situation, a lot of times the exhaust panels are on the back corner of each wall. Therefore, it's dragging the air that way. If we put a part in there, if we had a 20 foot wide booth, we would assume we would have a 15 to, you know, 16 foot wide part. Then our airflow profiles around that part. We could take our volometer close to the part and probably get a lot more consistent airflow reading. So because of those variables and the way that air moves and it's turbulence and through the booth and things like that, it's hard to stand in just one place or two places and get that uh, feet per minute or that, that measurement that we're looking for. But where we know there's air moving is in the exhaust uh, filter face. So that what we would like to do is we'd like to take our measuring device of whatever type, here we're gonna use the volometer. We see there's a little arrow for the airflow direction. So I'm gonna switch sides here. And if this was our filter face, let's just say it's these four uh, 20 by 20 pad sections here, okay? And we pretend that that there doesn't exist. What we wanna do is ideally is take nine readings on this filter, okay? And we would wanna do that in nine different places. Now, this booth is very small. So if we had a larger booth that said had 100 you know, filters in a filter bank, that's a lot easier to do. We can pick nine places in that filter face and, and distinguish where those are, and then we'll take nine readings in that area. But being that our area is a lot smaller, we want to take as many readings as we can, but if we took nine here, nine there, nine there, I mean, that's a lot of readings. We get a lot of redundant probably measurements. And, uh, but what we could do here is let's say we'll take six on this filter, we'll take six on this filter, and go on. So what we would like to do is to be about two, three inches from the filter face, and you're gonna take that, that reading there, and you're gonna record it. Let's say it might be 300, it might be 350. If the fan is mounted on top, and you're not using any type of baffling system in the exhaust plenum, it's likely that with a clean filter, that you're gonna have more airflow closer to the fan than you will lower. Now, as the booth functions and the overspray gets in the filters, Resistance goes up in this filter, which moves the air down the plenum because air takes the path of least resistance. But as we start with clean filters that the fan was on top, we can see very high velocity ratings here and lower at the bottom. Vice versa, if the fan was on the bottom and when we're up here, we probably see our lower end. So we'll take that reading across those three, we'll drop down and take say three readings here. We need to record those readings and we'll do that to all of the, these filters coming down You'll see a difference even from here to here sometimes in just a 20 by 20. So it's important to take as many data points as possible. So there's a lot of things that come into play, like I said, with the, uh, the readings that we get, and that depends on just the overall setup of the booth possibly. If there's multiple fans in an exhaust plenum, then you're gonna see higher readings where the fan is located versus the spots that are furthest away from each fan. So when you take those measurements, try to get those spots in there as well, and that kind of smooths out our, our average, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our Comet uh, whiteboard, and I'm gonna walk you through some of the math here, and uh, hopefully you better understand what we're talking about. We'll put some real numbers to it, and, uh, and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, we're over here at the Comet whiteboard and let's go through some of the numbers actually in front of us to kind of talk about what we discussed uh, there earlier. So this right here, I've drawn our four uh, filter cells, our 20 by 20s that we looked at over here in our visual demonstration and we had four of those. So we said ultimately we would like to have nine locations in each location we chose. If we had a larger filter face, we would try to find nine different locations 
to take those readings from one to get a, a broader spray uh, of a span of inputs across our filter face and then also the more inputs we have the more accurate our calculation is going to be so being that we were talking about only four filter cells was a lot smaller we just decided to go with six uh, per filter cell gives us 24 uh, data points which for something this small are to give us a pretty accurate calculated CFM so let's just kind of go through this so if we chose to do it this way and we say we're starting up here and we take our reading uh, let's say we got 350 feet per minute there remember that if the fan was mounted up here high it's possible that our readings on this filter closer to the fan are going to be a higher reading than possibly what we might see down here at the bottom so uh, but they as we average them it equals out we go to the next one let's say that we saw like 345 and then we see like a 370 for this one over here and as we move down and into the next filter we take all those readings as we take one we just write it down then we get to the bottom like we discussed they may be lower so you may see one around 200 190 maybe even down to 150. okay apologize for my handwriting i'm not the best at it but what we're ultimately trying to do here is get a sum of all of those figures so that we can get an average feet per minute so what we would do here since i skipped a few is we're just going to say that our sum equals x and we had 24 data points and we have 24 records that we recorded so we would just take 24 and we would divide that into x and that's going to equal our uh, feet per minute average okay so let's move over here to the other side of the board where i've already put in some information uh just to simplify this a little bit of, of what the math really looks like so our filter area was a 20 by 80 okay so it was a 420 by 20 sale so that's 20 40 60 80 to get our our filter area if you just looked at it as a whole area okay our booth fan CFM was designed at 2200. Now that was designed so that we're moving the appropriate amount of air for the application, okay? So based on those things that we know, let's start doing our math. So let's find that we have to first find our square inches because ultimately we want to go to square feet. So we'll just do that, broke out slowly and go by inches. So to do that, we take our 20 wide times our 80 tall filter area, okay? And that would be 1,600 square inches. All right. We need square feet because, once again, we're trying to find cubic feet per minute. Uh, so we need to know the square footage of that uh, first. So what we do to do that is we take our 1,600 square inches, and we're going to divide that by 144, which is one by one foot or a square foot, 12 inches times 12 inches, 144. So that's where that comes from. So if we do that math right there, we come up with approximately 11 square feet. And I'm probably running out some decimals there. Okay, so we, we, uh, we see 11 square foot of filter area. Our average feet per minute is just filled in from what we got from our 24 data points and when we average that out. So let's just make up a number and let's say it was 232 uh, feet per minute, all right? So to get our calculated CFM, we're in our final step here. We just take our 11 square feet, right? And we're gonna multiply that by our 232, uh, 232 feet per minute, right? So we took our feet per minute by our square that gives us our third with our cube, right? So we get cubic feet per minute. Uh, so that's gonna come out to be about 2,552 uh, CFM, all right? So we calculated through all of our inputs, 2,552 CFM. Our booth was designed at 2,200 CFM. Like let's say that was 100 linear feet per minute going through our uh, work area. And we calculated at 2,552. So what that tells us is, is we've either hit pretty much our, our CFM, because this is a calculated CFM, or we're moving a little bit over. If we come in that close right there, we're probably moving right about where we need to. This is a good baseline 
uh, not only to know what your booth is, is uh, moving with clean filters, but also it's very important when you're setting up a manometer because there's a lot of uh, uh, rules of thinking on how to set up a manometer. Some people give it just a standard deviation to say once it, the resistance gets so high that that's where it needs to be. Uh, with all the different systems and the different types of filtration, that's really not the, the best way to do that. The, the best way to do it is to do exactly what we've done here. So as a booth begins to run and operate, most operators can tell you when the booth is starting to suffer a little, like the air overspray is hanging a little longer than it used to, things like that. At that time, you go and you do these readings again, and you see, oh, you know what? We're not moving our 100 feet per minute. Well, that just told you right then that those filters have to be changed before that point. Because if you're not moving the design feet per minute, now you're violating national standards and, and, and some things along those lines and maybe you're getting some hazardous environments for your, for your painters and things. So that's the, the most accurate way to set up the manometer. It does take a little more time. It's not something that you just roll in and say, okay, it's just three eighths of an inch. As a sort of a rule to get everybody by uh, the first time when we set up a manometer, that's, that's usually how Comet recommends that you do it to get a baseline and then you're gonna adjust from there. And you have to do that by testing the airflow. So you can figure the fan has so much static pressure that it's available to it. You can calculate your duct static pressure, your resistance through your filters, subtract that from what the fan has available, say a half inch, three quarters, one inch, whatever it's set up to be. And then say we can load filters to this point after that point of load, then we can't load anymore because our fan starts to suffer. So you can either calculate a manometer by doing what we did here based on CFM, or you can use say like the pitot tubes and the manometers and calculate how much static pressure you're actually seeing in the ductworks, uh, intake of the fan, ex, ex, uh, uh, evacuating side of the fan, get your filter resistance, add all that together, and then you can go from it that way. So I hope this was beneficial to you and I hope you see us again on another video.